And welcome back, everyone, to episode six of the Rally Report podcast. With me today is the first female player on the show. I know it's about time. I'm super excited to introduce former top player at Yale and now storming up the PSA ranks, ranked 69 in the world, um, Lucy Beecroft. How you doing? Hi, Sean. Good. How are you? Good, good. Um, so it's been quite a successful year for you. Um, hasn't it, Lucy, moving up the ranks from 147 at 2020 and now 69th close out 2021 and winning the Nash Cup, uh, upsets after upsets. Do you feel that you've improved to that degree in such a short period of time? Or do you think that has more to do with you getting more exposure? Um, I think it's probably a bit of both. I mean, it was kind of a weird sort of year of, um, you know, gra graduating in 2020 and then turning professional and then having yeah. no no events to play for, um, you know, sort of like 16 months or something. So um, obviously that whole year I just spent training. So I think that's defi that definitely helped and, you know, put me in good stead for when tournaments did restart. Um, but I think also, you know, just getting getting back on court and playing playing against those top top players has definitely also helped um you know get my and I think it was a case of I knew my ranking was gonna go up to from where it was because I, mm -hmm. when I graduated I had no points at all and I was 300 and I don't know 60 something um <laughs> and it was kind of a rough time because I couldn't I couldn't get into anything but then I also couldn't get my rank enough because I couldn't get in. So it was like this vicious circle of, um, yeah. you know, trying to just get started once tournaments did restart. Um, and, you know, they, they put a bunch of small events on in the UK last yeah, right. last summer, um, or the summer just gone. And I couldn't even get into like a 3K or anything because I was, you know, there's quite a lot of players in the UK, um, like younger players coming through and who, who have some kind of ranking just because they've played a couple of small events and um so i was sitting at like six reserve for these three k's and it was just brutal like not even being able to get into them but uh right had a couple of lo lucky breaks actually when I, I got back over to the states and um got into a couple of big events one being the world champs which was just ridiculous really <laughs> yeah right. um uh that i got into that so that definitely helped and you know like getting getting that exposure and um and those points and then it's kind of just gone from there and yeah like you like you mentioned a couple of uh wins and stuff at, at nash and it's been good so do you feel like yeah. there's more on the line for you especially that you know how good you are and how good you can you can be so when you like get into these small tournaments you're like i need to be performing at all times does that kind of get to you yeah, yeah yeah for sure i mean it's definitely like it's now that I'm, you know, now I'm like top 70, just, just inside mm -hmm. the top 70. It's like, it's trying to be patient with it and not like, you know, I feel like I want to be playing, getting into the, <clears throat> excuse me, the bigger ones now, you know, the platinums and yeah. cracking that top 50 and like, but then I have to kind of sit back and think, you know, I've only actually been playing tournaments for like right. the last sort of five, <laughs> six months. So I need to just kind of like take a step back, I think, and realize that, you know, the fact that I've got enough to... 69 um right. since playing my first event in june is actually you know i should be happy with that but uh <laughs> now it's kind of just i feel impatient to get to that next sort of milestone you know um right but i'm i'm sure it'll come it's just um being a little bit more you know <laughs> waiting a little longer so um give give us the i'm actually curious give us the rundown of how you like do you do you personally sign up for tournaments do you have to be personally searching for them or is the psa helping you guys out in terms of maybe like emailing you guys so these are the events that are coming up and yeah are, yeah i mean it's all pretty much um it's all pretty much done online so there's like the, the website once you join psa and you have your uh, membership then you know there's like a full calendar of events that you can go on and look at and um mm -hmm. and then you, there's different sort of levels of membership so you can join as a like a regional member or a, just like a national member or or um i think it's like continental and then world so <clears throat> that kind of determines like what how much what events you can play and um so obviously like obviously i've joined as a world member so that i can play any tournament anywhere um right and then yeah you just kind of go on and like they'll they'll send 
update emails with you know new events that have been added to the calendar and closing dates for events um and such but it's all pretty much down to you to remember to enter and you know um no yeah. no where you're going to be next and you know if you've got cla- if two tournaments are clashing it's a, it's your responsibility to make sure you're not in both or um you can be like penalized so mm-hmm. yeah it's quite a lot of um you know managing that but i think my uh, four years at yale have made me pretty good at like you know managing uh, yeah. time and being a bit more organized so uh-huh. it's uh not too bad. Yeah, wait, let's let's talk about Yale for a sec here. First of all, I think a lot of the Instagram questions that I, I put up on the poll, people, I don't think people realize how good of a junior player you were. Uh, Lucy was amazing. I don't want to speak for her, but she was an amazing junior <laughs> player. And I, I was curious, um, as someone as good as you were in the juniors, why, why didn't you immediately want to go professionally, but take the college route? And especially you being from the UK, also take the u.s college yeah yeah i think um it's it's pretty common for for uk junior players especially sort of now to to be going professional straight from school um Mm -hmm. and and by school meaning like high school and and i actually was listening to um the one of the previous episodes with with sam todd and i know that's that's the route he's he's um yeah. going going down now and uh and it definitely was something that you know I, I considered and you know I was I played for England throughout all my juniors and always knew that I wanted to go professional you know since probably being yeah. eight years old or something I, I said that I wanted to be a professional squash player mm-hmm. but probably didn't really know what that meant at the time but uh <laughs> but um yeah so it was kind of always like in the back of my mind and I was always like yeah, I'm probably just gonna go professional straight from school, and um, and then kind of I got a couple of like pretty bad injuries in in towards the end right. of my junior career. So uh-huh. I I took maybe a year, close to a year off when I was sixteen, and then again it, the sort of the year between um, finishing high school and like going going to college, I had like two pretty bad injuries on the bottom of my foot. Um, and that kind of made me think, you know, I need, I should probably have something else as, as a backup and not just be, you know, putting all my eggs in one basket straight away. And, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I so did the injury I was, was a like, huge deal. It was like a time for reflection. So if, in a way, if yeah. you hadn't gotten injured and you just went straight, yeah, through, I mean, who knows? I, I, I could have. I still think, I, I, like when the time came, I probably would have would have gone down the university route just because mm-hmm. you know I did I did okay at school and I, I wasn't I was like quite academic quite enjoyed school and like I think just being aware of you know the fact that you can't play squash forever and it's gonna yeah. come to a time where I'm gonna have to do something else that like I probably would have still gone down that route but I think it definitely just emphasized that more and like made me really think you know this this, if this happens in two years time and I have nothing else to do then you know um yeah so so yeah that kind of was like where the that kind of route came in but with the U.S. route it was more of um I knew a couple of girls who had gone out to the U.S. sort mm-hmm. of a few years who were a few years older than me um fellow like both fellow yearlies actually Millie Tomlinson and Kimberly mm-hmm. Hay um and Kim was actually is from where I'm from in England, so I like like looked up to her growing up kind of thing, and she was always, yeah. you know, like always at the top of the England junior um, rankings and stuff as well. So Yale was kind of always like in the forefront of of things, but I never honestly never really thought that it would actually happen. You know, it was kind of um, like oh yeah, maybe I'll go out to the states for for yeah. college, and um, you know, I kind of would say that and then think yeah it's probably not going to happen like I can't really imagine <laughs> moving to a different country and stuff but um yeah when I was in when I was in high school doing my A-levels like I was in contact with a couple of the coaches from um well from obviously from Yale and then I was looking at you know I visited Trinity and Princeton and Penn mm-hmm. as well um and did a couple of visits um what 
was the decision factor for Yale? Was there something that you particularly liked? Um, I think it was it was just kind of the relationship that I built with um, Dave and, and Pam Saunders, who was the, one of the assistant coaches mm-hmm. at the time. Um, like I'd been speaking to them for probably close to two years by the time I had actually like decided to to um, commit to Yale, and it it just felt like you know they they really cared and they kind of I'd already built that relationship with them before I'd even started, and that was something big for me, especially moving to a different country, you know, where I wasn't mm-hmm. going to really know anybody, and and on my visit as well, it just kind of felt more homely than than the other schools, and yeah. I don't know. I, I think probably like the the idea that was already in my head from knowing Millie and Kim who had gone yeah. out there and like um, I don't know. And I mean Yale Yale's a pretty good school. So it is a so pretty... It wasn't too hard of a, it. Too, it wasn't too hard of a decision when I um you know when I like had the grades and yeah SAT scores and stuff and um yeah like I wasn't sure of of where I would end up that's what and like that's why I was looking at you know I was looking at Trinity and I wasn't sure Mm -hmm. what kind of what what my grades would be and what my scores would be so because I mean the SATs were literally like the bane of my existence when I I had to go through that process process. Um, yeah so once you got got the grades and all that it was like pretty clear to you where you wanted to go exactly yeah Um, yeah how was that transition from being a junior player to becoming a college squash player? Because just because of the depth and strength of U.S. college squash, did you think there was a transition for you, or you relatively eased through it? Um, I think there was a transition in the sense of you know being in a new place and mm-hmm. kind of very just new environment and sort of managing the the academics as well as the squash and and I'd kind of had a year out as I mentioned I was injured sort of that year before um my my sort of like when I was because I went I actually started Yale a year later than um than I technically should have I, I took an extra year um before I went so I was sort of injured that whole year so I hadn't really played much competitive squash um mm-hmm. and I think just like getting back into that and getting back into training you know sort of five six days a week um was as well as studying again was quite quite a probably a bit of a shock to the system but but all you know definitely like for for the good for good reason and um you know once I got back into it it was it was great and I mean I think for me knowing that I still like there was still a clear intention of turning professional once I graduated um so I think having that setup of you know you have training five or six days a week and it's the whole team's there. There's scheduled like strength and conditioning and everything was sort of on a plate for you to just take, take up. And like, I think for me that transition from like junior to professional squash, it was like, that was like the perfect transition because I could train as much as I wanted and everything was there. Like the facilities were amazing. Um, So I think, yeah, for me it was it. I obviously wasn't training and playing at the at the level that I am now, and you know a higher level that I hope to be playing at in the future. But it sort of gave me that four years to really like you know get my degree, but also maintain a very good level of squash and training and great competition against you know my teammates and and yeah. the other other schools. So, um, Lucy, I read it in an article that interviewed you that you said how competitive you were as a person. Um, did it ever get to you when you realized, I'm sure there were other players that you grew up with moving up the ranks and then you're, you know, in college, obviously you you knew what decision you made, but did it ever get to you being like, oh, why can't I, why am I not moving yeah. at the same pace? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was t- like, I didn't play many PSA events during um, my time at Yale just because it was, well, I mean, you know, the, the academic schedule was a lot. And then yeah. obviously our our college schedule was also, it kind of happened that a lot of the smaller US, US-based US tournaments were like at the exact same time as our college season. So yeah. the, the ones that I would be able to play, I then couldn't really play. So uh-huh. um, I managed to play like a few, but you know, I, I knew it wasn't my like main focus at the time, but it was, it was still 
frustrating not necessarily seeing other people move up but just the fact that I wanted to be sort of doing two things at once and I was like yeah. I really want to be professional but like I know that I'm doing this and I'm doing it for the right reason and like mm-hmm. was having a great time at Yale but also was like a little annoying that I couldn't just like play in any tournament I wanted to play in um, right. and that made it even more frustrating when I then graduated and was like right now I can play <laughs> professionally and there was just no tournaments for a year <laughs> a little pandemic just um, ruined the whole plan yeah um, exactly so i was pretty eager to get going when the tournaments restarted yeah so how did how did practice look like for you especially given how good you were did you practice with the men's team as well or did the coach have a separate schedule for you knowing that you wanted to go professional how did that work um yeah i mean it wasn't too too different I, I did I did definitely practice with the men a bunch um which which I was really really lucky that I had that you know opportunity be, mainly because we had the facility to do so like mm. I think Yale's probably one of the only schools where the men men and women were practicing at the same time because you know they have 15 courts and mm. it doesn't need to be a staggered sort of practice time so that was great you know I, I was mixing in with with the men a lot and um but there was also, I mean, the women's team from my freshman year all the way to my senior year. You know, right. I was, awesome. I actually played two my freshman year um, mm-hmm. behind Jenny Shale, um, who's still a really good friend of mine. And she, you know, we were, we were kind of very, very similar in standard my, my freshman year. And she, she played at one and I was at two. But um, so I, I still had like good practice partners with the women as well. And through to my senior year where um like Helen Teagan who um just graduated last year she was also you know great to practice with and so it was it was still a good sort of mix um yeah even though we didn't have anybody else sort of like stand out or he was going professional or anything it was still mm-hmm. you know a very good level to um to train with being that you wanted to go professional did you feel like you had to compromise on certain college experiences or you were like, you know what, screw it. I'm here for four years. I'm going to have also as much fun as I can. How'd you? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I did everything that I wanted to do at Yale yeah. and, um, and I didn't really like, I'm not a huge party person. Like, go, you know, I, I like, I like to socialize and go out and yeah. have fun, but I wasn't like, it wasn't my whole life at Yale, but, you know, I wasn't like, I wasn't in the sorority. I wasn't really into the whole, you know, going out like three, four nights a week yeah. sort of thing. So, which to be honest, isn't really how it, the culture at Yale, I mean, the weekends are big and the Wednesday night's big, but that's, um, you know, I, I kind of just went went about it as I as I wanted and if I wanted to go out I went out and I didn't really hold back as such and because of my squash like mm-hmm. you know I was probably still more sort of aware and in, in terms of like my diet and things like that I was probably more you know conscious of than some um college students but yeah not the 3 a.m I didn't post drinking yeah. pizza <laughs> dominoes yeah well maybe maybe a few but uh <laughs> but no it was um I don't have any like you know I don't ever think oh I wish I'd done that or mm-hmm. um so I, I never felt like I really missed out as such um yeah unless it was like the whole team was missing out on something because we had a match or you know it wasn't yeah. like I, I wasn't really um having to hold back too much like on a personal level so now you graduated 2020. I'm sure you were fired up to be professional now. And then the pandemic hits. So how did you have a set plan for you um, as soon as you graduate? I mean, I know the pandemic started at March. Did you have to go back home right away? Yeah. Or... So, yeah. So no. So we, yeah, it was a funny, I mean, I was actually on spring break in the Dominican Republic <laughs> <laughs> talking about having fun. I was, um, <laughs> with my friends, you know, like senior year, spring break, where I was like, okay, yeah. it's time to go all out and just enjoy it. And then Senior spring, yeah. Probably like, yeah, mm-hmm. three three days into spring break, like, you know, COVID just hits. It was like, the I remember it was the day where everything got cancelled, you know, like all European yeah. travel, like the NBA was cancelled and we were all sitting at dinner thinking, oh my, like, shit, this is good, this is real. <laughs> um, 
so I was actually supposed to fly back to to New York to go back up to Yale for yeah. the second week of spring break and then you know for senior spring but um so I actually changed my flight so my girlfriend lives in DC so she was on spring break separately and then I ended up going to stay with her for I I was there until July um so I was like I didn't really want to go home immediately because I didn't know what yeah. the situation was going to be right, like right. everything was still new and um we hadn't even heard that like graduation wasn't going to happen yet or anything so I was kind of holding on just in case you know yeah somehow something miraculously changed which obviously it didn't but um, <laughs> I think we were all pretty naive back then when we were <laughs> thinking it was yeah, just going to last just a couple like, of months it's, it's, or something. it's going to last a month and then everything will be fine yeah yeah, yeah. I know um if only we knew but <laughs> but yeah so so I was there until July um you know, I graduated online, which was not exactly what I yeah, had pictured. That's, but, that's tough. yeah. But, um, Wait, so you were then, in DC till July. And at this point, were you playing squash at all? Were you able to. No, work out not at all. So I wasn't able to, to get on court from. Mm -hmm. was actually like the week. So the weekend before spring break was the um, national individuals. And that was yeah. like pretty much the last time I played. Um, so my visa ran out my student visa ran out in July. So it was like, oh, okay, no, I've got to yeah. go now because I don't want to like yeah. overstay just in case that, you know, screws up anything in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I left like mid July and then, so I'm actually study. I'm still studying. I'm doing a part-time master's now, um, at the, wow. at the university of Nottingham. Um, yeah. so I'm, I'm currently based in Nottingham in England. Um, and, so that I'd like knew I was going to do, I was going to continue doing that regardless of COVID. I mean, it kind of made it more of a, you know, reason once I knew that squash probably wasn't going to be, you know, happening that much sort of. Yeah. Um, so, but it was, I was planning on doing it part time so that I could balance, you know, the training and playing and everything with, um, with getting my master's because I'm getting like a sports scholarship through the University of Nottingham, so it was it was a perfect time to to do that, and um, I was actually like going to be financially better off doing <laughs> doing it than not. Um, so so it worked out worked out pretty well. Yeah. That you know I had that to do um, all of last year. So so yeah, I went back home in July, and then sort of moved down to Nottingham uh, in September, and then all my all my classes and stuff were online um again from september uh and then yeah i was just kind of training in nottingham and it was um i was fortunate that i was able to be like signed off by england squash as an elite athlete so i could still have some access to because i mean the uk went through like lockdown after lockdown and everything was closed and um so elite athletes had access to to the squash to the squash courts like what, what do you mean by elite athlete is this what do you mean elite so athlete? Was, does that you, mean like you're a part of the england squad uh sort of so you there was like some criteria that i think to be honest i don't even think i met the criteria i think you had to be ranked top 150 to be signed off uh -huh. like through the governing body they they basically like get you a letter signed by a doctor saying that you can still train mm -hmm. um so but because they obviously knew my situation of like just graduating and like didn't have a world rank and really and they kind of made the exception and signed me off anyways so i was still able to to have access um to to, to a court which was like kind of a saving grace because i think i would have gone insane if i <laughs> you know couldn't even train or anything yeah. through um because the lockdowns were pretty intense in in, in england mm -hmm. i think compared to you know, the US kind of reopened yeah. again, um, like late summer and then didn't really close again. But yeah, I mean, it was probably November, December th through to March, like it was full lockdown pretty much um, in the UK again. So wait, how was it going so yeah, back was just... to playing? Was it a, was it a rough couple months? Yeah, I mean... I honestly don't even really remember when I started. I must have, 
I played once or twice in the US, like in June, July before I'm not mm. coming back. And then, and then I think I just like gradually got back into it. It didn't take too long. Um, yeah. You know, I think once you when you've been playing for twenty years or something, <laughs> it comes yeah. back pretty quickly. So, um, but yeah. So and then was just kind of doing my masters and and training and um, just waiting really for for tournaments to restart. So yeah, as a young upcoming player who's moving up the ranks could you give us an insight on as a day-to-day on a professional of like how you manage your schedule and all that yeah yeah definitely i mean i'm um so obviously like i said i'm still i'm still studying but it's very very sort of low-key now so nothing like what (laughs) what yale was so i can really like you know my training's my full priority now and i can um I've been, you know, like I say, since since sort of last um, September, I've been, you know, training full time twice a day, six days a week with one one half day sort of thing. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's been honestly the last sort of five months has been a total whirlwind because tournaments have started again, and I've been going from one yeah. place to the next and. I'm in a position now where I feel like I haven't trained properly for the last sort of four months because I've just been <laughs> playing event after Thrown event. Thrown into and, tournaments after, to- yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, kind of the opposite of what I was doing for, like, a year. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, like, you know, any like a, any kind of week where I don't have an event, it's, um, I'll, I'll do probably two days where it's like double squash sessions um Mm -hmm. like a mixture either like a feeding session or a pressure session or or, you know routines drills with another player um or match practice and then you know like ghost in session i'll probably do a ghost in session a week um probably a bike session or, or like a treadmill session. I mean, it it, it definitely varies depending on yeah. what I have coming up and, um, and you know, whether I'm in like doing weights or whether I'm like kind of coming off that because I've got a tournament coming up or whatever. So it kind of definitely changes week to week, but. Um, are, you, are you practicing with def- the whole English squash players or are you at a separate club from them? Yeah. So in Nottingham, there's actually a ton of, uh, we're, I'm, really lucky i have so i live with three other squash players so oh, i'm wow, actually really i mean i'm saying well we, we're not we're hardly ever all there together to be honest because of <laughs> tournaments or like because of covid we were all kind of home and but i'm living with um tim Agus, um mm-hmm. world number i think current 21 um yeah. uh, georgina kennedy who was harvard grad um she actually also, like you, moving up the ranks, on the yeah. podcast yeah, yeah i mean pretty <laughs> A bit quicker than I am. She's there. Uh, she's <laughs> crushing it. But uh, mm-hmm. she's already I think twenty five. But I mean, she she deserves it. She's she's an amazing player, and she's worked mm-hmm. worked very hard. And um, I'm sure she's just going to keep going up. But so them two, and then a, a Dutch girl, Sana Veldkamp, um, mm-hmm. who's also a professional player. Um, so I mean, right there, I have three <laughs> three training partners. Like just waking up and like, do you want to of... go train? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. And then Millie Tomlinson's also in Nottingham. Uh, Colleen O'Mar, French number two mm-hmm. or three. Um, yeah. So I mean, there's a solid group of girls like right on my doorstep. Um, wow! They, wow! I did. I did not realize everyone's yeah, over there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then I'm I'm fortunate enough to get on court with uh, SJ, Sarah Jane Perry. Like mm-hmm. I've been going over to um, Birmingham where she lives, which is only an hour's drive. So. I, get on court with her whenever I can which is obviously you know um very very good practice and you know yeah, she's no, sure. she's been great and put a lot of time and effort into um trying to help me out with my game so you know I kind of, I'm I'm very very fortunate at the minute with people that I'm getting on court with and um it's not necessarily like an England squash setup but it's mostly English or pe- English based players um right. you know that I'm hitting with uh, I, I've actually out, been so. super curious about this. I feel like with other individual sports, you rarely see a, a mix of different players, you know, training together and being friends 
and getting along so well. But I feel like with squash, especially um, within the tour, it seems like it's very connected, close knit community with people getting along as you know, you're living with other player, other players as well, which in a way is unheard of in other individual sports. But yeah, if you could speak on yeah. that a little. No, definitely. I think, I think it's definitely like a strength of, you know, a, a great thing about squash is the small community that it is and everyone kind of sticks together. And, you know, I mean, we kind of have to because <laughs> it, it is that small and there's not, yeah. not really a lot, uh, a lot going. So, but no, it is, it's, it's great. And it, I mean, I feel like to, to improve, you have to be on court yeah. with better players and, you know, people that can push you and um, your competition. I mean, it's it's a tough one and some people probably don't like it as much and um, and I, I understand why, you know, you don't want to be showing all your cards to somebody yeah. that you're <laughs> right, probably right. going to have to play at the next event. But um, <laughs> but I think it works both ways, you know, like the, the balance of it is, is, um, is good, I think, and... You know, for me, I'm kind of in a position where I have nothing to lose, like getting on court with people that are, you know, 50 places higher ranked than me, 60 places higher yeah. ranked than me. Like, you know, maybe they they might not like it as much, but I've got nothing to lose. You know, I'm kind of just right. soaking it all up yeah. and um, learning everything I can. But but yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I know I know like the U.S., um, all the U.S. players now based in Philly, and I think that's kind yeah. of, you know, I don't. I, I haven't heard any of their perspectives on that, but um, it'd be interesting to hear how they, you know, because I mean, especially the U.S. women, there's what four, or five of them in the top twenty now. Yeah. It's, um, right. You know, so well, that's yeah. like, yeah. So it's um, be interesting to hear how, what they think, because I'm sure they all want to still be working on things themselves and yeah. you know doing their own thing. Um, but, Wait. So how how yeah. has the uh, house dynamic been? I mean. I'm just curious whether, you know, you guys do a whole, you know, match play situation, you know, a tough loss, you come back home and then you have to. Yeah. Right yeah. Are I you mean, good I at guess separating? Honestly, yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, we are all good friends, so it, it, we can have a laugh and a joke, but um, yeah. honestly, it, like I say, that it's been kind of very rare that we've all been there and mm. like Gina's, Gina's been down in London for, for most of the last year and hasn't really been around much. Um, just with COVID and like her yeah. coach is down there and obviously her parents and stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think again, from my perspective, like I'm, we're not that close in the rankings that it's a little, it's a little like, you know, not too serious when we play. Like I'm probably, I'm probably not going to come up against Tina in a, in a tournament. I'm not getting into the tournaments yeah. that she's playing in right now. So yeah, you know, maybe if we were all kind of around the same rank, and it might. So be it seems like this dynamic will only work for uh, like a, <laughs> another year, and then yeah. it might have to all go yeah. their separate ways. Then we'll be out. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't no, work anymore. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of like navigating as a young professional, I want to hear about you know your sponsorships, um, like how you manage your financials, and you know, because we all know how. <laughs> terrible yeah know, money wise <laughs> what's going on tell me about it yeah how how are yeah. you navigating um, that i know you're sponsored by head uh 305 squash and any like some others yeah. are you going out there hunting for yeah. them like how is that how's that been yeah i mean it's definitely something that you know now that i'm sort of getting up the rankings and mm -hmm. and playing playing more events and stuff it's definitely something on my mind that i'm looking for because like you say i mean you definitely can't just make make ends meet from from the tournament prize money. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've been, um, you know, I've been with three or five since I was a junior, and their, you know, their support's amazing, and they've, they've, I mean, pretty much just one guy, Joel, who does everything, and he's, he's, um, you know, a good friend now, and sort of support has supported me for a long time, and same with Head over the sort of over the last sort of fifteen months. Um, you know a great racket company and but again it's not it's not financial and um that's that's the equipment and clothing side sorted but it's oh, not okay you know they're, they're not paying the bills so um it's yeah it's not paying I'm, I'm your electricity for, bill <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately not no um so yeah I, 
I am looking for for financial sponsorship, and I think I've been in a lucky position over the last year of doing my masters. Like I was saying, I've I've been sort of given a scholarship through. Yeah, could you can um, you the, elaborate on the that? university? Yeah, the yeah. So yeah, so they offer sports scholarships for you know high le- high level athletes, um, and obviously you then have to represent the university, um, mm-hmm. which is a little a little different i mean actually quite a lot different from sort of like college squash but Uh, in the u.s um so so it's it's called the the like event that you play in is called bucks um it's like british university and college um sport i guess um Mm. and you know there's matches throughout the year similarly to college squash and um there's like a big finals weekend like like the nationals kind of thing um but it's it's not quite as serious as as the u.s setup like Mm -hmm. you know there's practices throughout the week and nothing's like mandatory and it's not it's only a five-man team instead of a nine nine person team um yeah and it's not you know if if you can't come to practice or you don't come back it's fine it's not like whereas i thought the u.s was a lot more it's, yeah the u.s was a lot more strict yeah. and you know if you were on the team you had yeah. to be there and um you know match days were a huge thing and all the parents were there and it was you know quite like a professional sort of setup whereas from what i've found books was a, l- a little bit more relaxed and it's kind of like just encouraging people to play more than more than being a super serious thing um so yeah. i actually have the the individual event coming up this weekend um which i'm playing in so that'll be good i'm not sure of my draw or anything yet but um Mm -hmm. but yeah so so i'm like representing university of nottingham and um you know with my scholarship i get free strength and conditioning and coaching and physio and everything throughout through university and then i also get a um a scholarship of um which you know is a good amount of money that's kind of um can be put towards whatever it needs to be throughout the year for you know play and traveling and etc but for me that's mm-hmm. actually just cover that's like basically covering my living costs in nottingham because i'm obviously having to pay to live away from home so yeah um so in a way it's been nice that i haven't had to worry about money to live <laughs> but at the same time I'm, it's like you know with with squash once that scholarship once i'm done next year with with the degree then yes that oh. um then you know then yeah. i have to think about actual living money as well so um so yeah back to the sponsorship front i'm, I'm definitely yeah. looking for you know financial support and i've actually just been um just been lucky enough to to get some support off um a guy is actually a Yale alum who I met when I was out in the US in DC. Um, I played an exhibition match and and kind of got chatting with him after. And um, mm-hmm. he's you know been a great support and um, he owns a, a law firm in DC called the Bristol Group. So they've agreed wow. to to sponsor me um, going forward. So uh, wow, that's, that's, that's you know great help. That's awesome, and, yeah yeah so it's it's just really networking with people and talking to people and um you know it's like you you, sometimes it's surprising to see how interested and and sort of in all people are about what we're doing and it's it's really nice to see because you know we we definitely don't get the right recognition that Uh, other sports get and it's it's not in the public eye and it's unbelievable um, how little recognition yeah 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 so so sponsored by them and then I'm also, um, so I'm actually making the move, well, sort of in the process of hopefully making the move back to the, to the States. Um, oh, so, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to be, um, sort of heading back there sort of middle, middle of next year. Um, so I'm going through the whole like visa process right now, yeah. um, to get, a like a P1 visa, which is like professional athlete visa um mm. so i've been sponsored by sponsored for that by squash revolution um oh so you can be in dc a, i'm assuming around yeah so i'll be yeah. probably like based around the dc area and then 
you know, I mean, I'm going to probably spend quite a bit of time in Philly and, um, you know, wherever, obviously, wherever tournaments take me. But, but yeah, Philly's not too far, so I'll probably be up there, you know, every other week or so. And then um, yeah. hopefully I can join in with the with the U.S. national right. training yeah. stuff at the new center. And I was speaking to Spencer about it, and he he said, you know, they'd, they'd be happy to, to help have me join in the sessions and stuff. So... So yeah, I'm hoping that that kind of comes through um, to be to be heading back out there sort of once my degree's done, middle of next year. Well, I guess then yeah. we wouldn't, won't have the problem of the issue of you guys all living together over there when you guys, you're rising up the rankings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lucy's just dipping yeah. out at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, gotcha. so Squash Revolution have sponsored, sponsored that. And, um, yeah. And, and that's kind of in partnership with expression networks who who sponsor a lot of the top players now as well mm-hmm. um so gotcha. yeah um but yeah, yeah any any other sponsors out there that <laughs> that want to sponsor anyone who's listening right now feel, yeah <laughs> feel free to, to shoot me a message <laughs> so okay so now let's uh i'm gonna do moving into this new thing i'm doing it's called a quick fire segment um pretty much either answer in one word or yay or nay and there's going to be some tough ones. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to answer it. But <laughs> okay. feel free to answer it. I think it'll be good. But we're going to start off with some squash-related ones. Um, let's start with best of three. Yay or nay? Yay. Practicing alone or practicing in groups? Which one do you Groups. Prefer? Groups. Um, goggles and squash? No. Commentators for squash? When viewing squash. Yes, definitely. College squash in the U.S. Best thing. Got it. Nicknames <laughs> for PSA players. Gay or nay? Yeah. Yeah. Coaching post-career? Yeah. Um, now, these are some more juicy ones. Most underrated player on the tour right now. I wouldn't blame you if you say your own name for this one. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. I'm going to say Chance in Yuck, Columbia, number one. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, she beat me in the Hamilton 10K, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how she got it. Um, okay, yeah. now. As opposed, do you think there's the most overrated player on the tour right now? I mean, Lucy, feel free to name drop. Oh, Asal. Okay. Okay. That's, that's juicy. Okay. Now we're going to go into some, (laughs) some life related ones. And then I'm also going to come back to these uh, in your answers, but we're going to do some life related ones as well. Um, Favorite place you've visited so far through squash or you know what? Vacation as well. I am Malaysia. Favorite drink of choice? Coffee. How about for alcohol? Alcohol. Probably a Moscow meal. That's a great choice. Um, I was actually going to ask, I guess you answered it because I was going to ask coffee or tea, but I guess. Okay. Yeah. It'll coffee. be coffee. Yeah. Um, thoughts on vegan diet? Yeah. Dabbled yeah. with it a bit. Favorite food or cuisine? Asian. How about favorite British dish? Fish and chips. Um, biggest fear? Probably lose it, losing a loved one. Biggest pet peeve? Seems like you have a lot for that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, biggest pet peeve? People just like loving themselves talking about themselves constantly (laughs) (laughs) um pets none of my own my girlfriend has two cats which are technically my own now so yes (laughs) has she have you always been a more of a cat person than a dog person or has she helped you transition Uh, she she's i mean i never had pets growing up so Mm -hmm. it kind of was you know no there wasn't there was no real preconceived sort of favorite but (laughs) I'd say definitely cats now, yeah. Favorite movie? 
Harry Potter's. Yeah. Um, about favorite song? Also, like, is it a go-to hype song you have? Favorite song? I do quite like Don't Stop Believing. Quite a cheesy one, but... <laughs> <laughs> what job or sport if it weren't for squash? Uh, soccer or football for any English people listening. <laughs> um, favorite athlete? Just doesn't have to be. Got it. And how about for squash? Currently, I mean, I'm saying currently, Nurel Tayeb's one of my favorite players to watch. Right? I'm very uh, excited to see her back. That'll be exciting. She's basketball. back. Yeah. yeah. Do you have her? Do you have her winning it? I'd love it if she won it. Absolutely love it. I mean, yeah. might be a little, little too much after you know, hasn't even been a year I think, since yeah. since she gave birth. But um, yeah, I mean, I'd absolutely love to see her win it. Well, yeah. Okay, so that's it for the quick fire um, questions. And I think we got to address a couple of them. Um, let's look at. So, let's go to the most overrated player. That one because <laughs> seems that well, you aren't particularly you know. aren't particularly a fan of Asal. Do you think? I mean, he's definitely on the up right now, and he's really taking the headlines in squash. But are you not a yeah. fan of the antics? Yeah, I mean, I I actually really respect you know how quickly he's came on the scene and you know like he's you know one of the best players in the world already and but I just think he doesn't need to do all of the other stuff and and the celebrations and yeah. the, you know it just it just seems a bit much and and I know it's a very you know love-hate relationship I think with most people seems but um yep. and I don't I wouldn't like the annoying thing is I do I do enjoy watching him play <laughs> which is kind <laughs> of like maybe going back on what I'm saying but um mm. It's like, and I, I don't think it's necessarily, maybe it wasn't the right answer for overrated because I think, you know, he's he's very, very good and mm-hmm. he's, he's shown that. But I just yeah. think everything else that goes with it's a little, uh, little much sometimes. So you said for best of three, you said yes to that, right? Yeah. Do you hope that the game maybe transitions to best of three or are you or are you just saying that's what you would prefer personally no i think i think the way it is now where they're having having you know the odd tournament best of three mm. i think is actually a, a good way to do it i don't i don't think it should i don't think it should go 100 percent that way because i think you know best of five really shows the physicality of squash and i don't think it should lose that but i just think you know, putting the odd best of three tournament in there really kind of shows another side of the game and, and makes players have to be more attacking and um, almost be able to play both both styles. Um, yeah. Which I think, you know, almost brings the game on. I mean, I don't know. I think in some ways that might detract from or deter it from being, you know, the whole Olympic debate where it's like, you can't just have one set of rules and one one match length and stuff because I think that's probably a reason that it's maybe not in the Olympics that there's so many different scoring uh, systems and yeah, yeah. things that it, it's not just standardised in one way and it, it, that can be maybe hard to follow for people who aren't squash fans. But I don't know. I think I honestly don't know if the, the Olympic thing is ever going to happen. So maybe we just need to go our own route and <laughs> focus on the squash world, you know. Just anything that um, throws it at this point. Yeah. But I think, no, I think it's a good addition. You know, I don't think it should 100% be best of three. But, um, and I don't, honestly, I haven't really played at any, any events that have been best of three. So ask me in a couple mm. of years. I might totally change my answer if it doesn't go my way. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's a bit exciting. frustrating to. Is it frustrating to not see that, like, for example, the Canary Wharf um, only features the men's tour and not the female? Because I know yeah, the NetSuite does yeah. both, yeah. There's both, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Canary Wharf seems, you know, everyone that plays it or goes to watch. I've never actually been down there, but, uh, you know, they all say the atmosphere is incredible. And, yeah, yeah, it I mean, seems it looks, like the it, best. It looks yeah. electric, electric, yeah. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, for sure. I'm not sure why there isn't a women's event, but, um, you know, I'd love to see that on the calendar. And, and I think as well, you know, looking at having an event in, in the middle of London and is a great, 
idea and I think maybe like the British Open or you know one of the other big UK events should probably be held somewhere like that in in Mm -hmm. London you know I was talking to someone and we said you know if they could have it in like St Pancras or um King's Cross so like a big the one of the main train stations in London like that would be just like the TLC you know it 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 got people passing by all the time and right you definitely get crowds in there whereas you know the last few years I know because of sponsorship reasons it's been in Hull um which isn't the most attractive place in England to go to and uh you know it's it there's not a it's not a hub of squash or like where a lot of people are based or it's not easy to get to and I think you know having having one of those big events like the British Open in the center of London would would do great things for the sport so your favorite squash player is Noor El Taib. Um, yeah. And I want to just quickly go, being that the Black Ball Open is this Sunday, um, do you have any predictions on who you think is going to win it? I haven't really looked at the draw in that much detail, to be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. it'll be very interesting to see. I'm excited to see how Gina does because it's her. I mean, she played the US Open, but it's um, her, you know, second sort of big um mm-hmm platinum event and you know she's probably getting more comfortable playing against those top players now so it'll be interesting to see how how she goes i just think it's a great time to for the especially on the woman's side with so many good players already established and also so many upcoming you see upsets happen all the time which is great but yeah just curious definitely yeah i mean you you gotta put you know one of the top i'd probably say gohar or shabini Shabini, um, yeah yeah, I mean, you know, they're pretty unstoppable right now. But yeah, but as yeah a I think that's a great. Sorry, as a professional, do you feel Sorry. like when you're watching them play that they're level ahead of everyone else right now? Is it obvious to you? Yeah, or is it not I think. Really... I think. I was going to say, I think it's great how you know the the top ten, even top twenty. Like there's, like you say, even below that, there's upsets all the time. People beating mm-hmm. everybody, and it almost seems like. You know, if those two weren't in it, it's like it would be an open field and I think right. anybody could kind of, you know, from Kami to Hania, SJ, you know, um, down to like Gina and people like that. I think anyone could, could take that. But I do think that those two have kind of separated themselves a little bit mm-hmm. um, from, you know, they haven't really lost to anybody other than each other <laughs> in the last sort of few big tournaments so it'll be um it'll be interesting to see I'd, I'd love to see somebody you know have a crack at them but um but yeah I actually played against against Nuran Goha in the first round of the world champs when yeah. I got it when I got in um, how was that experience on the on the glass court in Chicago oh. I mean it was a, a incredible experience yeah like, yeah you know, I literally got the phone call the day before um saying that I got in off the reserve list and it was the, my the second tournament I'd played since you know graduating. Like <laughs> there was just a bunch of dropouts because of people having visa issues and stuff. But right. um, somehow somehow I got in. But uh, yeah, I mean you know going up against her on on the glass court was was definitely an experience. Um, held I held my own a, a little yeah. I think and uh, and yeah I got a I got a. Um, bit of a trick shot that made it on squash like a squash tv clip so i was happy about that (laughs) but that was uh didn't get much further than that but it was it was a great experience and definitely made me like you know hungry to play in those those bigger events on on that stage again yeah Mm -hmm. got it um well i think i'm gonna wrap it there folks again thank you so much for tuning in and thank you to lucy for so kindly doing this i appreciate it